nine biblical aspects of the Antichrist and how they fit only one man that I've found thus far. I've been doing a study recently on the Antichrist and trying to see what I come up with as far as biblical attributes and trying to search the globe of present leaders who would fit those attributes. And as we're in the very last of the last days before the return of Christ, only God knows the day and the hour, but those of us with discernment know we're in the season, and I believe we're in the very last days of the season because God's given me dreams, visions, word, and I know we're there. So let's go ahead and go through <coughs> what I've discovered and match them up with one man and go through a little more information that I found. So I'm going to have to try to cram it in. A lot of info here. Number one, the Bible says the Antichrist will run on a platform of peace, prosperity, and safety. I googled that and checked it out. And lo and behold, none other than Mr. Obama, as of January 2012, an article was written that his platform for this year is none other than peace, prosperity, and safety. His re-election platform matches what the Antichrist is going to run on. Number two, the Bible says the Antichrist will be a great orator. Who have you ever seen in the history of this world who's a better talker, speaker than Obama? I haven't seen anybody. This guy can out-talk anyone. He's, he is the silver-tongued devil, literally. Smooth talker. Number three, the Bible says the Antichrist appears on the scene quickly from out of nowhere, onto the world stage. Mr. Obama's history, non-existent. Community, you can't find anything in his background. It's all hidden. It's all quelled. It's all stashed. From a community organizer to a U.S. senator to boom, president of Senerica, the most powerful position in the entire world, the president of this filthy nation. This guy's definitely come out of nowhere. Number four, the Bible says the Antichrist will be effeminate. He, he will not desire the affection of women, which may mean he's gay, it could mean he's effeminate, or it could mean he's celibate. Okay, uh, We know that Mr. Obama's married and has two kids, but he doesn't have any new kids, no young ones. So we don't know if he's celibate. We don't know if he's bisexual. It doesn't matter if you're married or not. Tons and tons of men and women are married that are bisexual. And he's definitely effeminate. He's not macho. He's not manly. He's effeminate. So he could fit any of those criteria as well. Next, we hear in the Bible that the Antichrist will have a fierce countenance or a fierce look. Mr. Obama definitely has this covered big time. I mean, he's got a really good mean face and a mean countenance when he wants to have it. Number six, he will be more stout than others. This is often confused. The stout people think, and they tell me all the time, he's going to be a big, large guy. No, it's not the stout the Bible's talking about. The stout the Bible's talking about is more prideful and more boastful than his counterparts. And oh yeah, we know this guy is big time stuck on himself. He's got lots of pride, lots of boasting. Number seven, the Antichrist will be from the old Roman Empire. So you look at Mr. Obama's mom, she's a European descent. His dad is part Arab and part Kenyan, but the research has shown he's more Arab than Kenyan. So those two alone show that he would fit being born from two of the old Roman Empire. But if he was actually born in Kenya, which is still not proven, I, I still don't believe it. I mean, I don't. I, I think that the <coughs> birth certificate he's showing now is a phony, but anyways, whether it's phony or not, he still fits the criteria, but if he was born in Kenya, he's actually a European by birth because in, up until 63, Kenya was still owned by Europe. He was born in 61, so he fits that criteria as well. Number eight, of whoever has a sermon to look and know that the, that the Antichrist is a number of a man and his number is 666. Well, I did a little math. This just came to me yesterday as I was sitting around. I just wrote out Barack Hussein Obama, 18 letters in those three names. So you take 18, divide it by three, you get six. You get three names, three sixes, 666. Six, six. <laughs> so that definitely matches as well, okay? And number nine, the Antichrist says, will say that all religions and all people are equal. We hear Obama all the time, homosexuals, of, it, it, you know, no matter what you are, who you are, you're all equal. You're all the same in his sight, okay? 
So am I saying that he's definitely the Antichrist? I'm not saying that he's the Antichrist at all, definitely, because the Antichrist won't be revealed until after the church is gone, after we're raptured in heaven, the holy remnant. But it's good to let people know who your main adversary may very well be during the seven-year Great Tribulation. Do I believe he's the future Antichrist? Oh, yeah. I believe it with everything in my being. I believe that's what he's going to he's going to turn out being the actual Antichrist. A couple more things. The Antichrist, the Antichrist of the whole thing about the birth certificate. Okay, we've heard lots of things about Mr. Obama saying that his birth certificate is he was really born in Hawaii and and the sheriff of Arizona and his his uh, you know nonprofit people looked at it for a long time and said that they understand that now that he was actually that it's a fake. And the thing about it is, just think about it. Who in the world would not have a birth certificate? Is there one person or one being you could think that wouldn't have a birth certificate? God or Jesus Christ wouldn't have a birth certificate, okay? They don't need a birth certificate. They're, 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 they're the creator, the God-man. And I believe it's very possible this guy might come out and say, well, you know, I couldn't say anything back then because I couldn't reveal to the world who I was. But that's why I don't have a birth certificate because I'm God. I think it's very, very possible this guy could say this. Extremely possible. And let me go to another blog, another site that I, I wrote up on earlier. Let me pull it up here so I can get everything here. Okay, this was written on that Mr. Obama is the most anti-Bible president in the entire history of this nation by far. Not even close. Let's go through a little bit of things, a few things from Mr. Obama. 2008. He said that Christians cling to gun or guns of religion. They have no antipathy to people who aren't like them. In 2009, he said he wants to revoke conscience protection for health workers who refuse to participate in medical activities that go against their beliefs. 2009, at Georgetown University, he ordered that a monogram symbolizing Jesus' name be covered when he's making his speech. Also in 2009, he, declared, he declines to host services at National Prayer Day but he did have uh, uh, the, the Muslim prayer time. And in 09 again, he nominated three pro-abortion ambassadors to the Vatican. And of course, the Vatican rejected all three, but Obama uh, nominated them there. 2010, he deliberately omitted the phrase about the creator when quoting the Declaration of Independence. He's done it no less than seven different times, so he doesn't want God to be on the Declaration of Independence. He misquotes a national motto, E Pluris Pluribus Unum, rather than in God we trust, as established by federal law. And it just goes on and on and on with things that he's done against the Bible. <clears throat> and he's had the, in, in 2011, the Department of Veterans Affairs forbidding references to God and Jesus during burial ceremonies. Ridiculous. The Air Force stops teaching just war theory to officers in California because the course is taught by chaplains and based on on religion. He said he, in, in 2011 also the army guidelines who fall under Obama said that no religious items or Bibles or etc. can be brought in to visits at Walter Reed Hospital with all the troops being there. And there's like if you, you can keep going on and on with, with tons of them. I'll just try to pick some more out of here. There's, there's like a hundred of these things. And he, uh, in 09 also, he lifted restrictions uh, for funding of abortion groups. So abortion people could have a lot more money. Uh, he says that taxpayers are required to pay for abortions. He shuts down many pro-life organizations. Gave $50 million to an abortion organization wants uh, sex education to be to be um, throughout the schools and funded by taxpayers money even little children he calls uh, he's got he's Obama's officials assemble a terrorism dictionary calling pro-life advocates violent and charging that they use racism in criminal activities and He's going against uh, against the, the DOMA, Defense of Marriage Act. We know that. He is uh, supporting Planned Parenthood and helping alleged sex offenders, offenders get abortions for victimized under, underage girls. Openly promotes homosexuals everywhere in the military, gay marriage, 
gay this, gay that. We know all about his stuff from there, so that's enough of that. So look at the big picture of everything this guy's done from the beginning. He says he's a Christian, okay? But look at the way he lives. We'll be known by our fruit, okay? Not by our words. We'll be known by our fruit. This guy has rotten fruit. He has no fruit of the Spirit at all. Big time rotten. And if you look, if you Google his big campaign thing when he ran for office, okay? He said, remember what he said? He said, yes, we... I'm not saying the last word because when you say the yes, we... can saying it says thank you satan okay <laughs> obama's big campaign phrase when he started the first time he said yes we can you know the rest of it and it says thank you satan and if you hear it go to youtube and google it you'll hear the millions of crowds that are just cheering and smiling yeah and they're saying thank you satan with him by saying his slogan he's thanking his 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 uh, god with a little g satan for bringing him in the guy is big time evil. He's big time bad news. Okay? He says he's a Christian, he's a Muslim. He hates Christians. He doesn't want he hates Israel. Pretends to love Israel, but have you seen the way he looks at Prime Minister Netanyahu and photo ops? And the way he tries to threaten him and bully him behind closed doors? Bad, bad news, my friends. So again, we're so close to the end. No one knows the day and the hour but God, but we know we're in the end of the season, like I said at the beginning. And we don't have much time. The rapture is going to be the twinkling of an eye, and then someone's going to have to be to come on the scene. Is it possible someone could crawl out of the woodworks of Europe somewhere, you know, who's of European descent, and match all of these things with with Mr. Obama? I guess anything's possible. But right now, at this point in history, where we're at right now, everything is perfectly set up for this guy to be totally possessed by Satan when his time comes, and that he'll be Satan incarnate and be the Antichrist. I don't think he is now because he has to be possessed by Satan totally, but he's definitely Satan's right-hand man. He's under his thumb. He's under Satan's control. He's where he's supposed to be at for a reason. I don't think we'll even have an election this November. I think the rapture is going to happen. I think Mr. Obama is going to show his true colors. But even if there is an election, he's not going to lose. If, if Abraham Lincoln was alive right now, if FDR was alive right now, and they were Republicans... They wouldn't beat him. This guy is Satan's right-hand man. He's put where he's at for a reason. He's not going to lose. He knows he's not going to lose. Look at the smug look on his face. And look at his cockiness and his nonchalant. He, he could care, the, you know, the I couldn't care less attitude. Because he knows he's not going anywhere. He was born for this time. And he is Satan's right-hand man, sadly. He's got so many buffaloed. So many people think he's a Christian. So many big wheels in the church say he's a Christian. And they promulgate the whole thing, you know, Kind of like the emperor's new clothes. They say he's a Christian, so the rest of the flock says, oh yeah, oh yeah, Mr. Obama's got to be a Christian then because Rick Warren and Franklin Graham and, and Benny Hinn and, and Joel Olstein and everybody says he's a Christian. Yeah, he's got to be a Christian. Wow, yeah. You guys who say Mr. Obama's not a Christian, shame on you. you got people buffalo, man. You know, you might be selling Mr. Obama and, and your crew. I'm not buying. <laughs> I follow the Holy Bible. I follow the Holy Spirit. And I'm not fooled by you. I'm not fooled by you at all. And it doesn't matter to me if you're upset. It doesn't matter to me if your people are upset at me. It doesn't matter to me at all. You know, if you guys want to come after me, that's your choice. Because as soon as I'm gone, <laughs> I'm in heaven. It doesn't matter to me. But I'm not going to be shut up. The only way I'll be shut up is if I am killed. No other way is going to stop me. I'm here. The only purpose I have in life is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. To share his good news share the gospel. And that's what I do night and day. And I'm not going to stop doing it until I go to heaven. <laughs> that's it. So I'm putting this out there. Look at it. And you know, whatever. If you want to look at it with blinders on and say that I'm crazy, that's cool. But you'll look and see that I have Bible scripture and I have the description of what's going on matched totally. So I'm not going to have time for regular prayer, but I always give an altar call. So if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to the right-hand side of the Father, to heaven. And since that time, you've been making a place forever for all Christians. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart, pure, white as snow. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray that prayer, my friends, Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. If I'd like me to pray with you, send me an inbox, a private message. It's my privilege to pray for you. If you have another prayer request of any kind, 
send me an inbox a private message. I have the gift of faith. God gave it to me. Nothing I did, but I'll pray for you all the time until you tell me the miracles happened. Please share the video with everybody you can. Get it out there. I love you guys. May God bless you. Good night.